Welcome friends. It's Amy with Amy's Got Life Coaching. Um, let me see who's all here. And if anyone is in, you can just type your uh, into the comments. I'd love to see who all is attending tonight. Um, I'm so glad to be here with you this evening. With tonight, we're going to talk about um, planning our food tonight. But before that, what we're going to do is I want to just kind of do a little recap of what we've done in the past few weeks. So last week, we talked about stopping at enough, but the video didn't load. So I added a bunch of great content to my website. There's a blog over there about that as well as some other um, posts and videos on my Instagram and Facebook page. So please help yourself to look at that. The week before that, we talked about eating and when to start eating and how you know you're eating for um, physical reasons, your physical hunger, dialing into that. And then the week before that, we talked about water and the importance of water. Those two are right on this um, Facebook page. If you want to take a look at that, they're saved for you to look whenever you want to. So. Let's get into to tonight's topic, which is planning. So if anyone out there is like not a fan, when you think, oh, we're gonna talk about planning, planning food is so fun. Let me just say, I was not super excited about this one. I waited for kind of a while. I remember thinking to myself, I'm not sure I'm really like a big fan of the whole planning thing. So before I get started in that, I did wanna just cover a couple things. I'm a life coach, I help women who want to lose some weight and are feeling like they're stuck. So that was my story. I've um, In my 50s, I just thought it was too late for me. I have Hashimoto's thyroid disease. I was over 50, postmenopausal. I just figured it was you know, not my time that I was ready to give up. And then um, I learned about a life coach and I've never looked back. So I have maintained my 80 pound weight loss for the last three years. I started this process about five years ago. So for those of you who are, um, are curious about it, I would love to coach with you. We talk about weight loss tools, which is what we talk about on these lives. I have very specific weight loss tools. When you coach with me, we also dig into some mindset tools, which are super helpful in all areas of life, but especially with weight loss, that when we are eating for thing, reasons other than hunger, guess what they are, they're emotions, so we, we process our emotions, we process some of that information, and you kind of learn and get agency over and power over how you're thinking about things and how you're seeing things so that you can have the bandwidth to guess what? Make better choices and make um, improvements in your life. We also, because I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach, we do, I have, I create individual protocols for each client, or they, we together pre prepare an individual protocol for you, which works best for you. So it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's straightforward in you get to choose what you love and it's much more doable and will stick, you'll stick with it much more easily. So if you're interested in coaching, please check out my um, website. There's, it's probably, it's loaded on the, the page there and um, you can sign up for a, either DM me or message me for a private one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation. I would love to chat with you and explain a little bit more about my process. So let's continue. So when I first heard about the, the idea, my coach was big into, her thought was, um, yeah, planning was one of her processes. It was one of her, um, her, the ways that she said was the best way to lose weight. So I was like, okay, if you say so. She lost 100 pounds, her, she herself, and this is Corinne Crabtree. I actually was a part of the No BS weight loss program for a little while, and um, that is one of her principles. So I started with the water, and then I worked, played around with like, okay, with hunger, I think, I can, I think I'm getting to understand that a little bit. And then when um, I was ready to level up and make this planning thing happen, I remember thinking to myself, there were several reasons why planning wasn't not gonna happen. One was I told myself that it was boring and I didn't wanna be boring. Like, that's not for me. I like to be spontaneous. I don't like to be well you know, thought through. I do not wanna be a boring person. And that's just not for me. I love my spontaneity. That will just take away all my spontaneity. So that was a non-starter. I thought to myself, I, what if I don't want to eat? Like, what, I don't want people, I don't want, I don't want to tell me what to do. Or what if I don't feel like having that food? So what if I don't want to eat what I planned? Well, how does that work? 
because things happen. Life happens. My God, you know? Um, and then the other thing was the last piece was I thought, well, how's that really going to make it that much of a difference? Like really, is, does it really matter if I write my food down? And let me just say, I did start listening to her. I did start very small with one meal a day and layering up, layering up a little at a time to the point that um, basically, let me just offer that since last, since March of 2018, I have been planning every single day. I find it that valuable that I still do it today. I love it. It's It has been super helpful and absolutely one of the keys to help me lose that 80 pounds and keep it off. So why does it matter? So here's what I want to just, I just would love to share with you why it is helpful and how it how it's helpful and why it matters. So the first thing I want to explore is that it helps us to build trust with ourselves. That when we plan each day, when we become a person who keeps promises to ourselves, and we do what we say we're gonna do, that building up of trust with ourselves, and um, it sounds like it's this really small thing, like who cares if I have a Oreo or a Twinkie, but, but because we get into the practice of deciding ahead of time and being a person who follows through, that actually creates self-confidence. It actually is one of the tool, one of the pieces to generate self-confidence. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. It's also, I think of it now as a form of self-care. So the way I like to do it is I start with um, planning in the morning. That's when I'm the freshest, when my prefrontal cortex is firing on all cylinders. And I have my executive function is like kind of thinking ahead and looking at obstacles and be, you know much more engaged as opposed to later in the day when I'm at the whim of my feelings my emotions my bandwidth has lessened I'm kind of tired and cranky and I just want something fast when I plan from that place of love planning for my day in the morning I, I prefer the morning for you it may be a different time of day but I would encourage you to plan from a time that it works for you, that you feel the most um, empowered, excited, open, willing, curious, all those wonderful feelings, and love, most importantly, from a place, a loving place, where you're planning from your place of what you want for your life, as opposed to what you think, um, what, being at the effect of the the day, right? So when we're planning in the morning or we're planning from that time, that time and space, we're of, from the place of love and from a place of what we truly want. If we truly want to lose weight, we're going to be planning from that place in a loving way and planning a doable plan from that place. Let me just make sure I've got all the notes. Yes. Okay. So it, I, so it genuinely feel like it's a, it's a way, this is how I think about it now, that when I plan in the morning, it's a way to have my back. It's, it's a way to, to offer my future self, that afternoon self, a place of, a safe place to land. It's a way for me to have my own back. So that's what I love. Um, the next is preventing decision fatigue. So for those of you who don't know what the decision fatigue is, it's basically as we go through the day, it gets, it, we make decision after decision after decision. And so I did look up a definition and that basically as we go, it deteriorates the quality of our decisions made by um, after, after having to make so many. So we now understand that one of the causes of irrational trade-offs of decision making is that sometimes people make worse choices when they're buying something or when they're choosing to eat something. It's also sometimes we, we lose the ability to make better and more powerful decisions as the day goes on and it becomes, we just lose the bandwidth to make really good decisions. So if you're making that decision from, first of all, it's done, you don't have to think about it again. That's what I love about it. I make the decision in the morning, I make the choice, and then it's done, I don't have to think about it. So when I get back from work, from being out, and I come home, and my tendency had been to just stand in front of the fridge, you know, how you like, you look in the fridge, you look in the pantry, you stand there like, I don't know, I don't know, it's too long, it takes too much. Or you're not really even physically hungry, but you don't know what you're having for dinner. But now, if you know what your plan is for dinner, it's, it's so much easier to tell your brain to calm your brain down and go, oh, it's okay, I got you. This is what we're going to have, this amazing dinner. Just calm down, take a little break, and we got you covered. 
such a beautiful thing. Um, I also think it's really helpful to visualize any obstacles before they happen. It's a way for, to get, engage your prefrontal cortex to kind of plan out and anticipate anything that might come up at the last minute so that you can be ready for it so that you don't have to get thrown into, you know, a stressful situation. It actually helps to be, to work out a little bit more calmly. So um, one of the things I was thinking about, that there's a way to test this out. If you're not really open to trying it out with food, I would encourage you just to try this. Um, grab for tonight before you um, go to bed, grab an outfit, pick out what you're gonna wear tomorrow and put it aside and see what that does for you the next day. If it helps you to have a little bit more time in the morning, if it notice that, oh, I'm, I'm pulling out this shirt and it's a little wrinkly so I can just quick iron it tonight and I'm not like racing the clock tomorrow or oh, I have this outfit that I'm picking out and I have the shoes don't match or whatever and you figure it out and you maybe like try a couple things on ahead of time so that the next day you got your back. You're basically planning from a place of covering for your future self and as a loving offering for your future self, see how it goes, see if you like it. And I think that's a fun way to sort of test it out without dealing with the food, without having worrying about the drama about the food and what if I don't like it? Because it's the same thing with clothes, right? Just pick out the clothes decide to wear them, and then go ahead and follow through with it. Um, I think that'd be fun. So the last thing is that we hate open loops. This is, um, it, it closes the loop. So what I mean by closed loop is, I don't know if you guys know when you're watching a TV show or a series of shows or a movie and they leave it as a, like a non-happy ending or a cliffhanger, um, or better yet, when you're watching Netflix, if you're like me and you're like, I'm gonna watch this series and yep, I'm gonna just watch one more show, that's it. We're done after this next show, but then they end on a cliffhanger and you're like, dang it, oh! And then you have to watch the next one because you wanna know what happens. You wanna close that loop. You wanna find out. You wanna find resolution. So when you don't plan, it's like walking around in an open loop. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen today. I wonder what's gonna happen. I don't know. And our brains don't really love that. They love, our brains love certainty. Our brains love predictability. Our brains love um, things that they can count on and close loops. Because otherwise we, we wouldn't keep reading at night to find out what happens the next day with a character in the book, right? So same idea. So it's quite simple. The impact on deciding on just those four things. So I plan breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack each day and just taking a little bit of time, and I don't use a lot of time. Let me just say, I'm down to like five minutes when it comes to planning the food. It does not have to take a big chunk of time. I think that was one of the things, that's one of my obstacles. I just forgot to mention that, but I'll put that in for my writing, that I would, I thought I was going to take too much time, but it really doesn't at all. It's something that we tell ourselves it does, but especially as you get better at it, you start learning what foods you like, you can just plan it in a very quick amount of time, and you're good to go. So let me talk about each of the of my objections that I had had, that planning it is boring. So here we go, guys. If you need food and your food choices to not be boring, maybe you need to look at your life. It's gonna be a little tough on you here, but the truth is, why does food, ha if food's the only exciting thing in your life, then maybe you need to look at your life. So let that just land for a minute that when we talk about being a boring person or not exciting, that's a mindset, that's a thought that we get to have about ourselves, and you get to have whatever thought you want about yourself, regardless of what you do with your food. So I love to think that I'm an exciting person no matter what food goes in my mouth, that I'm just, you know, that my life is what I want it to be, and that I want something more in my life than to be having to deal with my weight for the rest of my life. And that's exciting. The other thing that I was thinking about um, was that when you're planning because you, you're, you don't wanna be boring, is it's an excuse not to plan. And it's an excuse not to change and to stay the same. And let me just ask you another tough question. How's that working for you? Just let that think, just think about that for a minute. If that excuse, if you like that excuse that I don't want to be a boring, I don't, planning is boring, I don't want to change that, fine. You don't have to change it. But if you are not happy with your weight, then maybe you need to think about, okay, well, maybe there's something to this. Try something different. 
I love spontaneity. So this was a big one. A lot of people have a problem with this one, but what if I, you know, I like to be spontaneous. I don't want to plan. That was my story for such a long time when it came to my calendar, when it came to food. So when we tell ourselves we don't want to, we want, we don't want to be predictable and when we love spontaneity, it's actually just a story that we're telling ourselves. So one of the things that I was going to offer is we only like to see that one side of spontaneity, which is like the kind of fun side. What about the other side of spontaneity? What about the times when you think, I'm just going to be spontaneous, I don't want to plan. Then you call up your friend to do something and they've already made plans because you didn't plan anything. You're being spontaneous, but then you're also not able to see your friend. What about when you're, you don't think ahead and you don't plan accordingly and you're late for an appointment, you can't find your keys, then you have a flat tire, then you're stuck in traffic. So I want you to take a minute and think about how that feels in your body when you're stuck in that traffic and you're late for an appointment. The stress, the tension, the shallow breathing, how hard that is on you. That's spontaneous. That's the other side of spontaneity, right? As opposed to you're thinking ahead. You anticipate obstacles. You put your keys out the night before. You leave in plenty of time. You look at the traffic on the Google, right? So you know on Google Maps so that you know you'll have plenty of time to get there. Think about that experience in the car, right? How much calmer and and more sufficient you feel in your body without all that cortisol flowing through, which of course we know causes urges. So let me just offer that. Um, so when we think we want to be spontaneous, I just want to challenge that thought that it's basically a lie. So there. Um, here's another thought about spontaneity. For many years, I did not limit myself with food. I did not. I did not plan my food because of that spontaneity thing. And I thought, this is it. I'm living the dream. I'm totally spontaneous. However, when it came time to shopping for clothing, then guess what was limited? My choices were limited. I could only shop at the larger ladies size clothes or I'd have to spend more money on the plus size clothes or there, um, I, they wouldn't have them, I'd have to order out for the thing that I would love. I'd find something in a regular size, regular size that I loved but I couldn't, they didn't have it in my size. So that limited myself. So sometimes when we, you can choose your spontaneity either on the food side or choose your spontaneity on this side, which is, I can go in any store now. I have so many choices, and I'm loving that spontaneity. It's a delight to go shopping. So, just offering that. Okay, this one's a big one that comes up a lot. I don't want to eat what I have planned. What about if I don't, what if I change my mind? This one's so interesting. So let me just say, I, um, I tested this one out. I was thinking that I just didn't want diet food. And let me tell you that the way I plan is, and the way I, with my clients is we do not plan diet food. So first of all, you're only putting on there the food that you actually want. So we're eliminating that issue right away. A lot of people think, oh, well, if I plan the food, that means it's diet food. Or if I plan the food, I'm only planning salads. Or if I plan the food, it's gonna be dried out chicken and broccoli or whatever. That's not true. When you plan your food, you can put in everything, anything you want on it. But here's what happens. Your brain's still going to be a brain. And my brain, one time, I remember putting a um, McDonald's cheeseburger on my plan. And at the time, I decided I wanted a steak sandwich instead. What does it matter? The truth is, it doesn't matter if I get a steak sandwich or a cheeseburger, it's basically the same thing. I could do a swap. It's not It's not against the rules or whatever to get a swap. However, if you want to build that trust with yourself, if you want to be a person who keeps promises to herself, then choosing the food that you planned is going to continue to create that muscle and to build that muscle. Also, 
our brains, of course, they don't want to do what we tell them to do. Like, let me, no one should be surprised that we're like, I know what, <laughs> right? And how does that sound, right? It's like your little child brain. It's like a toddler in there. It's your habit brain just being a habit brain. It's your, your basal ganglia in the back who just wants to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and, and conserve energy, just being itself. It's okay. You can tell them it's okay. You know what? We can have that steak sandwich tomorrow. Today, I have a cheeseburger on my plan, and that's what we're having. And you get to be the parent of it, which is your prefrontal cortex, and you just direct your habit brain. That practice is going to serve you in so many ways. For example, in the workplace, in relationships, in any other area of your life, of being a person who is a promise keeper. So one of the things that I was thinking about um, with this is imagine if you're a teacher and at the last minute you decide to change your lesson plan. Or even better, if you're an airline pilot and you're like, you know what? I know we're just like going to Chicago, but let's go to Boston instead. I changed my mind. It's crazy, right? So being a person who is committed to their plan is going to serve you in so many ways. So, and life is going to just be so full of opportunities to practice this. And it's such a great opportunity with food because, like, nobody gets hurt, right? It's just you. It's just you and your plan. Nobody else is looking at it. You get to just play around with it. And eventually, you'll decide, you'll learn what foods you want to plan, what foods serve you, what foods feel good in your body. So fun. So, this is the last, the last, my last objection is how can this one thing make any difference? And I remember thinking, well, I'm not, I'm just going to not write it down. Like, pff, whatever. Um, I don't really need to write it. Like, that's too much annoying. Or Weight Watchers used to give me a plan, and I stuck with that for a little while, but then I, till I didn't, you know. But here's why I will offer that writing it down, and I do write it down. Oh, by the way, this is my plan. I have, I, I created my own um, daily plan, and I write it down every day. I print out the sheets and write it down and evaluate, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But basically, I feel calmer throughout the day because it's done. It's written. The decision is done. It's in ink. I don't have to try to remember what I wrote. Um, when it comes to near dinner, I it helps me to be calm, like I said before. It also... Um, um, helps you to anticipate obstacles ahead of time instead of just doing it in your head. It also keeps me honest. So let me just say at 58, whatever I am, 58, sometimes I forget. I think I'm going to, I have this in my mind. Oh, this is what I'm going to have. But then when it comes to like evaluating, I'm like, what did I say I was going to eat? Or I don't remember. Guys, it's so helpful. Just write it down. It takes five minutes. It really isn't a big deal. Just write it down. Keeps you honest. Then next week, we're going to be talking about evaluation and how important evaluation is so that when we get to see what we ate, what we plan to eat, and then what we actually ate, we're looking at data and then we get to evaluate what happened. So a lot of times if we don't write it down and say you gain a couple pounds. You might be telling yourself stories like, well, there must have been salt, or I was a little, you know, I don't know. I just had a bad day, or it was stressy, or I, you know, it must be the, the tides, or whatever. Like, somehow we just come up with these crazy excuses if we don't have, we can, and stories, like essentially stories, if we don't have the data. This helps keep us honest. We look at the data, we look at our evaluation, same thing, by the way, if we lose weight. I can remember losing weight thinking it was just chance or it was just happenstance. Because guess what? When we lose weight, we want to repeat that. And how do we know what to repeat unless it's written down? See? It's amazing. It works so well. So that is my topic for the night. Let me see if there's any questions. And, oh, good. Um, hey, Michelle. I'm so glad to see you. If anyone has any questions or anything to add, I would love to answer them. Um, in the meantime, I just want to tell you a little bit more about the way it works is you can just sign up for a consultation and I basically, we just chat. I let you know what I'm, what I'm about 
and you can uh, we can go from there and you decide if you like to work with me and I work with my clients for um, about six months it's so fun and it's one-on-one -on, -one on zoom don't have to leave your house um, so I will just offer that if you are interested to just check out all my information I have like I said the website I'm going to be this is going to be I will be creating a um, blog there we go couldn't think of the word a blog for this topic and um, if anyone has any questions or if you want just additional support I can give that to you okay I think that is all for tonight Thank you so much for being here, and I hope this information will be valuable for you. Take care.